Hi guys. Many of us get our sense of the beginning of our professional teaching identities in terms of the experiences that we get. So if you get the opportunity to sit in and listen in on a lecture, you might get an impression that a lecture is great teaching. That's how to teach. If you get the opportunity to sit in on a simulation scenario and debrief, then you'll get a different impression of what effective teaching can look like. And similarly, if you find yourself doing placements, uh, preceptorship, if you are, um, you know, running clinical skills programs in a, in a hospital or in a, even in the community setting, you, the, all of these different uh, approaches to teaching are going to give you a, a different sense of what it is to be a teacher. And you can do all of this stuff with limited knowledge of educational principles, but to do them well and to do them effectively it's always a good idea to check in with the literature, to check in with the theories and to get a sense of why we do things this way as opposed to that way. So once you've got your why in place, then the rest of it is so much easier. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my teaching philosophy. My teaching philosophy is uh, the thing that underpins the teaching that I do. It's always my core, my center, my values, what I come back to that gives me my why on why I'm doing this this way and not a different way or doing something else altogether. For me, my teaching philosophy is about having intrinsically motivated students, having fun and being engaged. So I come to my philosophy with a pedagogy of play. And there's a few different theorists who have talked about how to engage, how to do interactive learning, um, how to promote learning through getting people the opportunity to actually do stuff themselves. Learning how to do the stuff themselves is what really helps people to embed knowledge. They embed knowledge through synthesizing information and through practice. My teaching philosophy is about giving people those opportunities to be curious and to explore and to have fun and to engage, to have conversations and to have their own knowledge valued in the learning space. Because we're all learners at times in our lives and in different facets of our lives. We're all learners, we're all teachers in, in different ways. So. Um, acknowledging that in our learners, acknowledging that they bring with them a body of knowledge and that they can deploy it in certain settings. If we just scaffold and support that, then we will get optimum learning. So that's my philosophy. And it's taken a few years to get to this philosophy. I wrote a 60 page document about my teaching philosophy to really sort of ground me in terms of all the ins and outs of different approaches to teaching and learning and coming back to my foundation of why I do what I do. Okay, so that's the teaching philosophy and it's just my teaching philosophy you will probably develop your own in different kinds of ways. Some people love to have a teaching philosophy that is um, grounded in interactive online teaching. What does that look like? There's various platforms that actually can facilitate that particular approach. 
to synchronous or asynchronous online or face to face. Um, and there's lots of lots of people have things like, you know, their 12 top tricks on how to engage a learner or how to motivate a learner, how to in assess a learner. How do you actually know what they've learned? So there's different skills that you'll need along the way. One of the chaps that is quite useful to know about is Biggs. Um, Biggs and Tang have got some stuff around constructive alignment. Constructive alignment means basically that you start with the learning that needs to occur. And then you move backwards to figure out how you're going to get there. 